for my voice, but I have never, never seen anything like it. I mean, do you believe in miracles? Yes! Welcome to the Andrew Zimmel Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Andrew Zimmel. Greg Bishop, senior writer for Sports Illustrated, hardest working man in the media, and I promise you that we talk about the Super Bowl coming up this Sunday. Patrick Mahomes, what is he going to bring to the table? How special is this 49ers defense? Why you should buy into Kyle Shanahan's system? And who is texting Jimmy Garoppolo wishing him good luck? All that and more. Great stuff. I'm going to shut up, and we can get right into it. All right, on the phone line right now, we have Sports Illustrated senior writer uh, Greg Bishop, one of my favorite writers, and he's in Miami right now for the Super Bowl. Greg, can you hear me? I can hear you great. Thank you for having me. All right, thanks so much for coming on. So let's talk about the storylines coming into this game because I saw, I'll start this off right off the bat, I saw Trent Dilford talking yesterday about how he feels like this is the same type of team for the Chiefs that the Broncos have with John Elway, how they had this great quarterback but they didn't have enough pieces around him, especially on the defensive side of the ball, to win the Super Bowl. So I feel like that is the storyline that is coming in the hottest right now coming into Miami. Yeah, I think that's fair. We're talking Chiefs here for this one. Great quarterback and not enough pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think that it's really interesting, right? Like, I met with Patrick Mahomes in December, and the two things he told me were that he thought, one, that they were better positioned to win the Super Bowl this year, and two, that he was a better quarterback than he'd been a year ago, even though he, you know, he, he, uh, he threw 50 touchdowns, 5,000 passing yards or whatever. I think when you look at their defense over the last maybe six weeks of the season, uh, they were really good at holding opponents to low totals. I think that they've improved with the additions of Frank Clark and Tyron Matthew. And I think that they're maybe a little bit better than we're giving them credit for. That said, I still buy the premise you just laid out. Like, uh, I think when you look at San Francisco, they're the more complete team. I think they have the chance to beat the Chiefs in many different ways. And I think if the Chiefs win the Super Bowl this upcoming weekend, I think what we're going to see is something special from Patrick Mahomes, which I think is always on the table. That, to me, is what makes this matchup so compelling. I think we're going to have to. So the radio station that I work for in Austin and the people that I'm around in the Austin media, they have all bought in on Kyle Shanahan. I think partially it's a bias towards Longhorns, uh, but I, I really do believe in this Chiefs team. And I said that if they were able to shut down Derrick Henry, if they were able to play so good from behind against the uh, Texans, I felt like this is a team of destiny. I, I think that they're going to be fine against the 49ers' run. I, am I wrong? Well, you know, it does feel like things have lined up for the Chiefs in a really nice, neat and tidy way, right? Like, I think that – I believe in, like, narrative arc, right? You know, like, I think in story form. And when you look at the Chiefs, it just lines up really neatly. You know, here's this coach, Andy Reid, that for years and years and years couldn't win a Super Bowl. Here's this team that for years and years and years has had really tough playoff losses, close games. You know, they lost one where neither team punted. Uh, and then in addition to their playoff losses, they've also had some real tragedy. Derek Thomas died super young in a tragic accident. Uh, Jovan Belcher had the murder-suicide a few years back in front of the coach and the general manager. And it just feels like it's their time. And, you know, the, the key to all of that is Patrick. You know, here's a quarterback that came in that stabilized the franchise, that got them that elusive playoff victory, that got them to the Super Bowl. And I just, like, I was talking to Tony Richardson yesterday. He played fullback in the NFL for a 100 years. <laughs> and he, he played for the Chiefs for a long time. And he said it just feels like like destiny is lining up here, you know. And I think that there's something to that. I think that the Chiefs, it sort of feels like this is their time, and it sort of feels like this is Andy Reid's time to finally get that Super Bowl win that's long eluded him. But I think more important than destiny, if we're just being honest, is Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> I believe in his right arm. I believe in his talent. I believe that he can beat the 49ers. And, you know, I, I'm not honestly sure who I'd pick today. I'm sure we'll get to that in a minute. But, like, I think it's going to be a great game, and it's one of the more compelling matchups for all those reasons that I can remember in recent memory. Now, I compared Patrick Mahomes and this Chiefs team a little bit to that first year 
with Rodgers when they won the Super Bowl, that, that first Super Bowl run that they had, and how their defense had a lot of really good pieces, but their offense was the thing that really got everybody clicking, that Rodgers was able to kind of unlock that next level for a lot of those guys on the offensive side. And that's how I 100% believe Patrick Mahomes has done for the Chiefs. I don't think Travis Kelsey is as good as he is. I don't think Tyreek Hill or Sammy Watkins. I don't think any of those guys on that wide receiving core, just any of the guys on the offense are as good as they are if Patty is not under center. Yeah, and you know, you make a really good point there. Like that that Packers team, what they did is they had a great quarterback. They played well enough on defense and they got hot at the right time. You could say the same thing about the Chiefs in every single aspect. You know, they got they weren't a wild card the way that Packers team was. You know, they weren't playing on the road every week. But, you know, if we go back a month here, you're talking about Lamar Jackson, you're talking about the Ravens. This is not supposed to be the team that goes out and uh, necessarily is, is steamrolling into this game. And so I think that's a great comparison. And to your other point, I also think that, yeah, Mahomes makes all those guys better. You know, they have a lot of speed. They have some weapons. Uh, you know, they can't really run the ball, which will be tough against San Francisco's front. To me, that's a matchup that really favors the 49ers. But, you know, uh, I think they're not only capable of winning this game, but we shouldn't be surprised if they win. You know, San Francisco has had a couple really big playoff wins, really dominant kind of games. But I think this is going to be a compelling Super Bowl. And I really think that, um, you know, we're going to see something special from Patrick Mahomes if they end up winning it. Now, we talked earlier in the year about coaching in the NFL because you wrote that really good piece for Sports Illustrated about the the coaching carousel and kind of the fraternity of brothers. Uh, Andy Reid, what type of special season – I know we kind of alluded to it, but what type of special season has he had this year? And it feels like all of the uh, years prior where you have an Andy Reid moment where he mismanages the clock or just something doesn't break his way, this – Again, maybe it's because Belichick's not in the playoffs the entire time, but this has really felt like a masterful coaching from him. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I think when you look across the NFL, there are a few coaches that are as universally respected as Andy Reid is. You know, I think this is a guy that, you know, he's, he's throughout his history really become sort of a sympathetic figure. He lost his son to a drug overdose that's been really well documented. Uh, he's taking chances on guys like Michael Vick and helps rehabilitate them and, you know, get them back into society. Uh, he's, he's the guy that can get along with Terrell Owens and Donovan McNabb. <laughs> no easy feat. And I think that, uh, you know, when you look at the one thing he hasn't done is win the Super Bowl. I think it's sort of unfair to him that we keep bringing that up and then it's become, you know, really this sort of like mark on his legacy. I, I personally don't think he needs to win the Super Bowl to get into the Hall of Fame. I think you look at his offensive innovations. You look at his longevity, you look at his coaching tree, like all of those things to me speak to a guy who's really been an offensive innovator throughout football for a long time. But I do think there is a real sense of people right now that just want to see him win, you know, that see the heartache, that saw how close he came in the other Super Bowl, that know this team is good. There, I think that he's so universally well-liked that they're – most most everybody that knows him wants to see him win on Sunday. And, I mean, what a story that would be, you know, to finally get the quarterback that does it for you, to finally get the ring. I mean, I don't, I don't even know how you top that. I think you got to retire. And that's what I was thinking as the, the Chiefs. I think that this is like, you clearly you want to win the Super Bowl. And Patrick Mahomes, if he wins, he will be one of the youngest quarterbacks ever to lead his team to the Super Bowl. But Andy Reid, like, I don't know if I go out on top or what I do from there. Do I try to win two in a row or what do I do? Because now I know I have the best quarterback in football. I can kind of ride this out. I can kind of coast this out a little bit more. Let's flip sides to the 49ers who have sure. another really good or a really good quarterback and a really good coach and Kyle Shanahan and Jimmy Garoppolo. What have you seen this season between the relationship of those two? Yeah, you know, I, I think I'd start at the outset by just saying I buy Kyle Shanahan's system. I think that it's worked universally, you know, everywhere they've been since they went to the Redskins to work with Mike Shanahan in 2010. I did a piece in August on those teams. You know, they only had one playoff team, but I think when you really look deeper at the innovation, you see a lot of stuff there, right? They they not only they, they made RG3, you know, into the best Pro Bowl year he'd ever had. Uh, you know, they end up getting fired in Washington. They go to Cleveland. You know, they make Brian Hoyer into a, the best year he ever had. They have, they helped Johnny Mandel into the best games he ever had in the NFL. 
And then it's right on down the line. It's Matt Ryan has an MVP season when he's under Kyle Shanahan. He's a great quarterback regardless, but he was the best quarterback in the entire league the year that he was under Kyle. You look at Jared Goff, you look at uh, all the way back even to like people like you mentioned, Elway, when they were in Mike's system. And so I think Jimmy G fits really well into that. You know, I think that he's an efficient quarterback who can minimize mistakes, who can swing it when he needs to, and who's not scared or sad to hand the ball off, you know, a million times and only throw eight times in the NFC Championship game. To me, he's, he's perfect for Kyle's system because he's cerebral. Uh, he can make every throw. And he doesn't need to be the focal point if the game plan doesn't call for it. And I just think that matchup has been really good. I think when you look to the Super Bowl, if you're looking at the 49ers, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy would probably be among the, the bigger concerns. You know, they, they, I think that what you've seen from them over the course of the playoffs is they've been able to sort of <clears throat> limit his tough throws, you know, to make it so that, you know, he's, he's being really kind of safe and, I think to beat the Chiefs, they're going to have to throw a little more. So that, that'll that definitely be one thing to keep an eye on. I said from the outset on this game, because, again, I'm dealing with a lot of people who think the zone run is going to tear the Chiefs' defense up. I said from the outset, you can't run the ball if you're behind. So if the 49ers get yeah. behind by one or two scores in this game, they're going to have to throw the ball. Now, Brady texts Garoppolo. That was the big story that came out earlier this week that he said, go win this one. The relationship between those two, I think, is really interesting and fascinating to me because I think that Garoppolo is going to have to have a Brady-type game, a just a game manager-type game, and then hopefully sling the ball maybe at the end to for the 49ers to win this game. Yeah, and I'm glad you asked that. I actually talked to Tom this week uh, about Jimmy, and what he was saying I thought was really interesting. He told me a story about they were all at the Kentucky Derby together back in May, and Jimmy, he said he could tell that he was – you know, feeling good and feeling healthy and ready to play a complete season and, you know, hopefully end up being better than people thought the 49ers would be at that time. Uh, I thought it was really interesting that those guys still keep in touch. And I thought it was really interesting that Tom is rooting for him so, so hard since he's not playing in the Super Bowl. But knowing Brady a little bit, that doesn't really surprise me. And so, yeah, I think when you look ahead at the game, I think, you know, Jimmy's proven this year that he can sling it if he needs to. You look at the New Orleans game. Uh, 30, 35 pass attempts, and they scored 48 points. They great play to Kittle off the sideline, if you recall. They really cemented the victory. Uh, you know, this is a team that can beat people in a lot of ways. The 49ers won a game 9 0. They won a game 48 46. Uh, they won games because of special teams. And I, I think Jimmy just fits into that. I think he's part of like uh, a machine that's very balanced and well oiled. I want to talk about the juxtaposition between last year's NFC Super Bowl team and this year's NFC Super Bowl team. In that, Sean McVay, I think, had to carry that team coaching-wise, where I don't think Jared Goff was cerebral enough, or he wasn't able to make the audibles or call the plays on his own, where Kyle Shanahan, I think, totally trust Garoppolo to run his offense when he's on the field and be an actual quarterback. Am I wrong there, or do, do you kind of see that too? No, I think it's fair. I mean, the thing with Kyle's system, these are the hallmarks. It's adaptable. They're going to attack every team in a different way. You know, they, they basically install 60% of their plays every week, and it's also flexible. You know, it allows the guys that are inside the system to do what they do best. You know, you've seen over the years the system adapt to Brian Hoyer or to Matt Ryan or to Jerry Goff when Matt LaFleur was in Los Angeles. And I think what you've seen here is like they've adapted it to Jimmy. They've got a bunch of fast running backs. They've got four guys that run sub 4-4, four, four, three that are healthy and will play on Sunday. <clears throat> they got Emmanuel Sanders in a ton of speed there. George Kittle's great uh, in terms of quickness and athleticism at tight end. And, you know, what you've seen is them just kind of adapt to a quicker, you know, more efficient kind of more West Coasty kind of offense. And so, you know, I think I think that's been a hallmark of Kyle's system throughout. I think he's always going to adapt it to his players, and I think that you know that's partly what's made Jimmy um, excel this season is that it's tailored around his strengths. I want to talk about the other side of the ball right now with Nick Bosa. Is he the best rookie defensive player that we've had in this game in the last? I want to say he's the best one since Watt. Am I wrong? No, not wrong at all. In fact, he might be the best one since Lawrence Taylor. Wow. <laughs> you know, like. Uh, I mean, Watt was a pretty incredible player right away. But, you know, I was down to the 49ers facility last week. And, you know, they, everyone talks about him like he's some sort of Greek god, you know. Like, uh, 
you know, I talked to Jerry Rice about him, and he said he, Nick Bosa looks like Wolverine, and I was like, he plays like him too. And, it, you know, to me, what you hear over and over is just how quickly he adapted to the pro game, you know, how easily the adjustment came to him. And he told me the other week that he ripped down Aaron Rodgers with one hand, you know, but that you, I can't rip down a soda can with one hand. <laughs> and like he's on an NFL field spinning away from an offensive lineman. And he's able to take one hand and rip down a guy who's athletic, mobile, and in really great shape. And to me, that was just indicative of not only Nick Bosa, but that defensive line. I think when you project out, it's always a little tough, but you know, if you look at those four guys and then the depth of their rotation behind them, you know, if they can keep them together, I think you're looking at the best defensive line in a long time. You know, this could be one of the best defensive lines of all time if they can keep them together. And it, it's just like a forest. You put two, six, eight guys in the middle, like a couple post players in the NBA, and then on either edge of them, you got D Ford and Nick Bosa. I mean, it just doesn't seem fair. I mean, like, there's a reason that they get after quarterbacks, you know, and there's a reason they're always in the backfield. That is a great, great group. And if they're going to win, they'll play great on Sunday, too. When the 49ers and Vikings played in the playoffs, I said to myself, okay, if the Vikings can get the running game going, we might have a chance in this game. And Nick Bosa essentially single-handedly shut down a lot of those plays. And that's when I bought in 100%. Because I still was kind of on the fence. I'd watched him all year. I thought maybe it was the system that was making him this good. No, it's, it, is his, it is his talent that is making him as good as he is. Yeah, 100%. And... I think when you look at that Vikings game, like the Vikings gave those guys a better game than the Packers did. And to me, the difference was the defensive line. You know, they were the single most dominant unit on the field that day. You could make the argument they're the single most dominant unit in the NFL. And the Vikings were able to get, you know, they had a couple of plays that worked, like the pass to Diggs on the sideline. They were able to put some points on the board. <clears throat> and you just saw that defensive line take over. And when that's working in tandem with their running game, it gives the 49ers a real advantage in that, like, most teams don't see that kind of style of football. Most teams are more prepared to play the pass. And, you know, most teams aren't, um, they're not as used to, like, you run the clock out on them. And so I think there's some advantage in that, too, and that it's not only hard to defend and hard to get the ball and hard to drive on them, but it's also you don't have as much clock or as many drives. And when you look at how might they beat the Chiefs, to me that's the formula. The best way to beat Patrick Mahomes is to keep him off the field. Exactly. And I, I've always said that I think things come in ebbs and flows and that the tide goes out and the tide comes in. And I really do think running football is going to come back in now that every defensive player has to run like a four or seven. Right. Like when you have a bunch of just really quick guys on the field, then you can start putting the ball down their like down their throat. And I think the 49ers are going to be it's going to, it's a copycat lead league. I think that more teams are going to think about, OK, how are we going to run the ball? Yeah, 100%. And I think you're seeing that a little bit, you know, over the course of these playoffs, whether it's with the 49ers or the Vikings or, you know, any number of teams that sort of subscribe. I, I think the Packers offense benefited this year from running the ball more. I think that Matt LaFleur brought that sort of element to them. Uh, I think you saw the Titans, you know, really come onto the scene and, like, really threaten to go to the Super Bowl because they were able to run the ball in such an effective way. I just I, I think they're also like a lot of good backs right now. If you look around the league, you know, I like Dalvin Cook a lot, I like Ezekiel Elliott a lot. I think there are some guys coming out of college that are gonna be really good, you know. And so I I think that like, yeah, a, a lot of the NFL is like cause and effect, you know, like something will happen and there'll be a reaction to that. And the better the teams get at defending the pass, the better that they're gonna you know, the more that offenses are gonna turn to something else, which in this case might be running the ball. It's a good point. Last point before we take Super Bowl predictions. Kittle versus Kelsey. I think that is the biggest uh, versus at position in this game. Who do you think is going to show out more? Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, I kind of feel like whichever one does, like that team is going to be in a good position to win. You know, th those guys are both catalysts for their teams. They can both run block. They can both catch. They're both fast. I think the matchup issue is probably tougher for the Chiefs than the 49ers. Uh, I think that they're a little bit weaker at linebacker. I think, you know, a guy like Fred Warner could, you know, end up matched up on Kelsey. And, some, you know, they could they could also use one of their safeties, and they've got some good ones like Jimmy Ward, really physical guy. Uh, I think yeah, that would be a decent matchup for them. And so, you know, if I had to lean towards somebody, I would say I'd probably lean toward Kittle. Uh, we've seen him have such an impact in the run game in the last couple of weeks. You've seen him move safeties and, 
uh, in nickel corners, like all the way to the sideline. I mean, real, like, you know, tough guy kind of stuff. And so, uh, but I think they're both great players, and I wouldn't be surprised if either one went off. All right, let's talk about Super Bowl predictions. I think the Chiefs are going to win. They're one-and-a-half-point favorites. Patrick Mahomes is the favorite to win Super Bowl MVP. What says you, Greg Bishop? Well, my first instinct is going to be to hedge. Uh, I feel like this is a true toss-up game. You know, in two weeks ago, I did not feel that way. I thought this was the Chiefs' year. I thought that for sure they would beat the 49ers and or whoever came out of the NFC. And I, I think the last two weeks have made that a little bit different. I think what we've seen is San Francisco's got a good formula. They're very balanced. They have a lot of talented players. I actually lean now toward the 49ers. I think that they're going to beat the Chiefs, and I think if the Chiefs win, it'll be because Patrick Mahomes does something that we're going to remember for a long time. I like the 49ers' depth. I like their uh, – I buy Kyle Shanahan, who's coaching. And uh, I don't know. I spent a lot of time down there last week, so maybe I was just drinking the Kool-Aid. But <laughs> my thinking has changed in the last few weeks, and it's based almost entirely on how the 49ers play. Any good media stories yet from Miami? Uh, now, media day was its usual nuts, uh, nuts self. You know, there was a guy in a Andy Reid pub pass and kick jersey from, you know, back in the day. There was, uh, somebody wearing a Viking helmet, uh, you know, all that normal kind of stuff. So it's still early in the week, but media night is always a, uh, my least favorite day of the year. <laughs> if I'm being honest. Yeah. Uh, but thank God it's over. We can get back to work. All right, well, everybody, you need to go read Greg Bishop's stuff in Sports Illustrated. It's going to come out online. Uh, one of the best NFL writers in the country. Greg, thanks so much. One of the most hardworking NFL writers in the country. Greg, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Anytime.